The first nine weeks have come to an end, but we still have a lot of recently developed content to cover. Three exciting new classes have been added to our school's curriculum. The updated checkout and earbud policies have caused quite the controversy around the school. We'll look into that and introduce you to the remainder of our new teachers. Roundups from the past few volleyball and football games, as well as our first track meet, are in review for our second fall sports segment. And finally, the Hillcrest Band's new halftime show may look good from afar, but it's amazing up close. We have the inside scoop on their outside-of-the-box performance. I'm Luke. I'm Vanna, and this is your Pats, Pats TV. TV. Hillcrest is expanding its horizons. New classes like photography, literary magazine, and welding are available to students for the first time this year. Our reporter Jalen Rooney has the details on what each course covers and how the classes are being executed so far. Just keep breathing and breathing and breathing and breathing. This year at Hillcrest, we are offering new classes such as welding, photography, and literary magazine. Let's see what they're all about. It's binding pieces of metal together to reinforce it to make it stronger. Well, today in the shop we can do pretty much whatever we want to. It teaches them more like hands-on skills and basic, you know. It's a strong career to have and it's good pay. Well, in photography we do a lot of photo challenges, which is where we all get like different requirements and we submit them at the end of the week and then we review them. And we also do a lot of reviewing Coach D's photos and a lot of our own that we submit throughout the week. I like the fact that it's structured enough to where you can learn about photography because Coach D is not only a really good photographer but a good teacher, but it's also not so structured to where you can kind of be free and kind of have your own elements and you can make anything your own. If you say it has this in it, it has this in it because you took it. And so you can kind of be your own artist. What I like about Lit Mac is it's a free space to be creative and we can do all kinds of things like uh, edit pictures and we also can read different poetry submitted by the students at Hillcrest. We use Canva and we use InDesign and InDesign is basically what we use to edit the pictures, the poems and the short stories and Canva is what we do to make our posters and our advertisement for LitMag. You can submit poetry um, through our Google Docs but we are working on progressing towards our new magazine. Wow those classes look like fun. I'm Jalen Rooney reporting for Pats TV. Seniors, the 2019-2020 FAFSA application opened October 1st. All seniors are encouraged to complete this application early. The entire student body has been buzzing about the changes the county board has made to our school's checkout policy. To investigate the opinions of the administration and just a few passionate dissenters is our reporter, Seth Bracknell. This year at Hillcrest, we have a few new rule changes, the most notable and probably most controversial being the new checkout policy. We talked with Mr. Hinton and a few students about these policies. The, uh, you know, the school system, they were getting a lot of, uh, a lot of students checking out. It was a situation where um, it, it was affecting the end of the day productivity, especially in high schools with all the classes having individual, you know, each one of the classes counting for, for graduation credits. It was a thing where not only the high schools were seeing this situation, but the elementary schools, they were having students getting checked out, you know, 1, 1.30, 2 o'clock, you know, missing an hour, hour and a half of school every day. I feel like it should be how it was in the beginning, you know, how in the at first we had the five parent excuses check-ins. I feel like it should be like that with checkouts too, and then after that it has to be a doctor's note. Then it builds up to be an excuse. Since there are many things that are out of the student's control in terms of checking in and checking out, just... Make it unlimited. I mean, of course, have, you know, certain excuses and, you know, there's got to be valid reasons for certain check-in and check-outs, but allow it so students will be able to freely get in and get out when they need to. You cannot receive a good quality education 
without the primary instruction of actually being at school. So it's just as important the emphasis that we place on, you know, checking in tardy. Uh, we're going to place that emphasis on checking out as well to make sure that everybody's here um, as much as possible and that uh, they're, they're getting that instruction from all the qualified teachers that are presented to them. Thanks, guys. I'm Seth from Pass TV. Thanks, Seth. And with the sequel to last week's new teacher segment is Hope Neely. On last week's Pat's TV episode, we introduced you to a few of the new teachers. This week, we're going to introduce you to the rest of them. Let's see what they have to say. I've always loved teaching folks, um, and so it's always been a part of me. So teaching was just naturally what I always wanted to do. Well, um, I went to school. I graduated from Central High in 96, and then I went to college at the University of Alabama and majored in biology out there. Hillcrest has been great so far. I love um, the teachers here. Uh, the students here are great. I love what I do. Um, great atmosphere here. So I've really had a great time here. Uh, I want to be a teacher because I grew up teaching horseback riding lessons, and so I really enjoyed that. Uh, I was really great at English um, when I was in school, so all the way from middle school through high school, English was my favorite subject. My dad was an English teacher, so he really fostered um, my love for reading, and I love working with kids. It's fun to come to work every day. I love working here. Honestly, um, it, I got my dream job right out of school. Um, all of my other friends who just graduated are starting, you know, low man on the totem pole at schools where um, they're having to do a lot, a lot of work um, to prove themselves and become a part of the community. And because I interned here um, and I got the job here, I automatically kind of feel like I'm part of the community and that um, I'm wanted here. And it's so nice. Everyone's so um, great and welcoming. It's been a really good experience so far. And there are a lot of things about being a teacher. Um, one is knowing that you're having an impact that lasts. Um, something you're doing, something that's going to um, spill over to the future. Working with kids, working with people, you have to be a little crazy to work with teenagers on a regular basis. Um, but it's just knowing that I have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with kids, and that there will be some some impact somewhere felt after after our days in class. Went to school at Florida State. We won't talk about their football team this year, but that's where I went to school. I grew up in Florida, the Seminole, all the way through. I love Hillcrest. It's very, um, it has been very welcoming. I love my kids. Um, I'm still getting into the, getting into the flow of things, but I do like Hillcrest a lot. I love the way things are run and things that are done here. And those are our new teachers from Pat's TV and all of the students here at Hillcrest. We wish you all a wonderful year. I'm Hope Neely reporting for Pat's TV. As you already know, football and volleyball seasons are well underway, and we have quite a few games to bring you up to speed on. Plus, a few statistics regarding our cross-country team's recent performance. Here with that review is Madeline McCracken. Oh, I've been shaking. I love it when you go crazy. You take all my inhibitions, baby. Hillcrest football, volleyball, and cross-country teams are making their way through the season. Hillcrest football had an impressive win over Brookwood with a score of 62-0. Plays like this touchdown pass from Jay Bramlett to Sincere Gibson helped secure the win. On September 21st, the team traveled to Northridge to take on the Jags. Nasir Boyd tied the game at 28 with this amazing run with two minutes and 17 seconds remaining. He is gone. Touchdown, Patriots! Unfortunately, the Pats allowed this touchdown with 33 seconds left, and Northridge came away with the win, 35-28. to It was a long road trip to Madison, Alabama on Friday, September 28th, and the Pats fought hard, showing a lot of offensive explosion, including this awesome catch and run for a touchdown by Trey Ross. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough, as Bob Jones defeated the Pats 35-21. to Hillcrest jumped back into the playoff race in Region 4 this past Friday night. Quarterback Jay Bramlett accounted for seven total touchdowns, including this one for 54 yards to Andre Seiler. A chance that the playoff still remains alive for the football team in the coming weeks. In volleyball, the girls have been doing well since our last episode and have improved in region play and overall. The cross-country team has been working hard and has compiled some impressive results. I'm Madeline McCracken for Pats TV Sports. Go Pats! At each new season, the pride of Patriot Parkway makes us even prouder with their wonderfully unique halftime shows. This year's theme is no exception. It's truly outside the box. I discuss the show in depth with the band members themselves.
Hey Hillcrest, every year the Pride of Patriot Parkway Marching Band does a new halftime show and this year's theme was out of the box and here's the inspiration behind it. Alright, our show this year is entitled Outside the Box. Um, it's a play off of Johann Sebastian Bach. It's, um, uh, we're doing Toccata and Fugue by Johann Sebastian Bach and then we get outside of that, outside the box and go to uh, Rossini's Barber Seville, uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Um, we're also doing Michael Jackson's Billie Jean and then we go on to um, um, uh, an electronic dance piece called Super Bad by a group called Flux Pavilion uh, that we use all kind of uh, lights and um, a lot of electronics and uh, a lot of keyboard stuff going on that we use a lot in that in that piece that makes it really unique and really different this year. You know I love marching band because it's more the creative aspect of halftime and uh, I just love the people in band and I love all the hard work we do and I guess it's just kind of satisfying just to see the whole show come together. My favorite part of this year's show is definitely Movement 4 uh, because we have a uh, like the big drum break and stuff and uh, the lights just add a whole nother aspect to it and also because of the choreography. My favorite part of this year's show is that we're doing two kick lines again. We did it my freshman year and then didn't really do it again but our second kick line is joint with the dance line and the majorettes and it just looks so good to have a big kick line. So the whole band turns on these lights that we have um, on sashes or in glasses or the majorettes have light up batons and they do a band dance but during that part there's a giant box because our show is outside the box and uh, I was just told to do as many cool things as I could do and so I try. <laughs> that halftime show really blew me away the first time I watched it. It was honestly my favorite part of the football game. Mine too. Speaking of football games, homecoming is only two weeks away and y'all do not want to miss our coverage on it. Plus the super spooky Halloween stuff we have planned. It's going to be one of the best episodes ever. Be looking out for it. I'm Luke. And I'm Vanna. And that was your Pats, Pats TV. TV. Love, love, I gotta keep, I keep on